Hi everyone and welcome to today's little drawing lesson if you like today. So I've been hearing a lot of questions about uh, pencils and so I thought I would address a few. So basically pencils they can come in a ton of ranges. These are just a few of what you can find in the market. So you've got the cheap old HB pencil. Find it in any stationery store, office, you name it, it's always there. Comes in a range of colours, makes, but it's always a HP. You can get pencils made out of pretty much solid graphite. These are very, very limited to the types that you can get, so you can't get the full spectrum of pencils. But you can get a, a fair few amounts of them. Only thing is, they break quite easily, because they haven't got that wooden protective coating on them. You can get branded pencils, like these, these are Derwent's. Lots of them. And you can even get automatic pencils, in which you can put a completely different range of graphites. So for me, I bought a load of these uh, when they were on sale, and I've got one that's got B leads on, one that's got H leads, I've got one that's got a di different one, and these are 0.5s. I've got a 0.3 somewhere around here, and I've also got a 0.7. So I've got a nice little range of graphites in there. But the one thing that these pencils all have in common is that it doesn't matter how do I put it? it doesn't really matter the grade of the pencil, it's how you use it. And one of the first things to do is a blunt pencil like this. Very, very blunt. Not much use for anything. If you start drawing with that, it's not really going to be any use because you're not going to be able to get any detail. So it's just going to be smudgy and you'll get some very weird marks. So your first thing really to do is just remember that a good pencil is normally a sharp pencil. So using the sharpener, you can use these little ones or these little ones or if you really fancy spending out one of these jobbies or even an electric one whatever you fancy whatever you feel works best sometimes the cheaper pencil sharpeners work much better than the expensive ones it just depends on the sharpness of the blade and the type of the pencil now when i say type of the pencil cheap doesn't mean better but it doesn't mean worse so for example uh, with a cheap pencil, what sometimes you get is uh, the wood itself is not a very good quality wood and you'll get cracks all the way through, you'll get knots in the wood so when you sharpen that, you will find that the sharpener will catch and it'll actually break the graphite inside there so one very handy hint is instead of sharpening your pencil that way around turn your sharpener upside down it's probably not the best sharpener to demo with, is it? Turn your sharpener upside down and rotate your sharpener, not the pencil. So hold the pencil and rotate the sharpener. I don't know how it makes it work better, but it does. Uh, the other thing about cheap pencils is that they can have fillers in them a lot more than more expensive pencils. That means that when you're drawing away, you can get crunchy bits. That's the only way I can describe it, it's literally crunchy bits. And these can be scratchy, it can damage your work, so it doesn't always help. But on the other hand, a cheap HP pencil you can get, like I say, nearly everywhere and anywhere. And it's a diverse pencil. HP is in the middle. It's not too far to the H's, it's not too far to the B's. It's slap bang in the middle. So it's a darn good pencil. And if that's the only pencil that you've got in your world, you haven't got any other types, you haven't got any B grades, you haven't got any H grades, so, and that's all you've got, that's perfectly fine. Because you can get a tonal range with just one pencil. Now, a lot of people, when they do dark arts, um, as in trying to get dark tonal layers, they push. And that's one thing you shouldn't do. Don't push hard with a pencil. If you want depth, layer. Now, it also comes down to how you hold a pencil. Uh, my hands are about the size of a nine-year-old's. 
and I also have that. I have issues with my wrists. So I can't hold a pencil for a long time, which is a problem. And I would strongly recommend that people, if you're going to do a lot of pencil work, take regular breaks and do little relaxation exercises. But it's where you hold your pencil will depend on how dark or light it is. So if you hold it really close to the point and you draw, you're going to get a dark line. If you hold it up here and do the same thing, you will get a light line because there isn't so much pressure nearer the paper. So if you want to layer with a HB, start off with a nice light gentle layer, go over it, come back, go over it. I'm not moving my hand down the pencil, this is the exact same pressure. Go over it. Just going to extend that a little bit. And keep going. Hardly any pressure at all there. Just layer after layer after layer. Now you probably noticed I'm rotating the pencil. I rotate to keep a sharp edge because the sharper the pencil, the more definition and detail you can get. So I'm hoping that will show you that just one HB pencil, I've got a really light tone over here, I hope my camera can pick this up, a really rich dark tone over here and a mid tone over here. That's just one pencil. But if you're going around and you're pushing, I don't want to damage you, actually it should be alright. So if you're going like this, To draw that's the only tone you're gonna get and if you keep on pushing hard you get uh, like a sheen or a shine on the graphite so you're pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing a your pencil's getting blunter and blunter and blunter but that shine will it won't look good it's not good it means you can't get any more layers on there and it gives a really really weird effect but if you're just keeping it gentle keeping it light you can control those tones so in this case if I want this one darker I'm just going over again going over again and just working back forward back forward nice gentle layers so there's no need to push hard pushing hard with a pencil does nothing well it makes a darkish line but the line you don't have to push that hard to get that line as you can see hopefully my uh, my layers are actually now matching up with this part but on here I haven't got any shine on here I can see shine so it's just learning to control the pencil if you feel that you have to hold the pencil right down here, hey, no problem. Just keep your arm loose, keep your wrist loose and control it. And you will have to have a lot more control, which can lead to a more sore wrist or an arm. But if you just relax, and keep it nice and light, you can seriously get good tone arrangements. In fact, that one is so light, I don't think it's showing up on the camera. So let's bring the pencil up. Right. So, let's see if we can get this in the range. Come on, camera. <laughs> okay, so, your lightest that you can get, you can even go lighter with HB. So light, dark, mid-tone. That's dark. So that bit was pushing really, really hard. This bit is just layering gently, and this is again gentle layering. Over here, just gently, with a nice light colour, a little bit of layering, and that's your mid-tone. So you don't need to go out and 
get a complete pencil kit when you're starting off drawing. You just need to relax into it and not push hard. I see so many people pushing so hard into the paper that it ruins their images. And I just want to cry and grab them and say, don't push hard. There's no point in doing that. That, no. Do it gently. Even if you're just using a gentle backwards, got a back forward, just to almost brush the paper with the pencil. Again, a couple of layers, just gently. Layer, layer. No pressure. And if you want to add a little bit of pressure, do so at the end. Um, don't do tons of pressure midway through a drawing because that shine's going to come in and ruin it. So I just wanted to cover this. But if you can afford better pencils than a HP, which is always good. Uh, Derwent pencils, they're not bad. They're midway pencils, I'd say. These are not great, not terrible. The B grade pencils, which is the soft, dark pencils, tend to be a little bit crumbly. Uh, and if you're wondering why do we call them H and Bs, H is for hardness and B is for black, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. So a H pencil will be really, really light. In fact, let's join that up there. There we go. So I've just scribbled here and this is a six, yeah, six H. And I've managed to match the six H with the lightest of my HB. So that gives you, that's why I'm saying a HB has diversity. And the harder pencils, the H range, if you go and push heavily with them, you definitely, you won't get a darker line. And it's because the graphite itself is harder, it will scratch and damage your paper. So again, no point in pushing hard, you damage your paper, it could just tear, it will create a texture where you don't want it, the pencil won't lay down, so it's, you know, common sense. But I'll bring that up so you guys can actually see that. So I think you need to see that. Right, so here's our H, and here's our HB. So your HB, you can get a 6H kind of lightness with Again, if you're keeping a light hand and just very gently drawing away. Now the B, this one is a 7B. And that means bolder, blacker and darker. Now, different pencils have got different grades of graphite in them. They've got different layers of fillers in them. So you can get pencils where they don't seem to get very dark or they don't seem to be very light. It's not you seeing things, it is the pencils. I found this out a few years ago when I got introduced to a different pencil. So I used to be quite happy with the standard, box standard HB. Woo. And then I got introduced to Derwent and I got really used to them. I enjoyed having the richer tones. Just going doggy doggy doggy. Sketch, sketch, sketch. And the thing is, when you start using B pencils, you are tempted to push hard because you want it richer, you want it stronger. And you've really got to fight that temptation. So, even if it means just trying to hold the pencil higher up the barrel, it will just help keep your pressure lower. So, I've actually... Just hopefully you can see my HB here, she bought HB. It's the same tonal depth as this 7B in the Derwent. So, so far your HB can get you 
6H range or H6 range and a 7B range. That's pretty diverse. And it's not by pushing hard, by simply just layer upon layer, over layer, over layer, and you get the cheesecake. Well, we can probably join them up. So this one's got a bit blunt, so time to sharpen. Uh, I always keep a pencil sharp, as I say, you just it helps with drawing humanely. The only thing is H pencils you can really really get sharp. B pencils are really harder to sharpen because they just wear down so much quicker. Uh, this has always meant for me. I'll start off with a sharpish pencil and within a few seconds I'll have a blunt, go back, sharpen and if you haven't got a protective sheet down you end up with graphite everywhere and yeah. So again a HB can be good to slow that problem down because it's not soft as a B, not as hard as a H. Now as I say quality sometimes does matter and what I got introduced to were these babies. Faber Castells 9000 art set. When I got these, they were about 15 UK pounds a tin, which it was jolly expensive for 12 pencils. And these, of course, come in a beautiful tin with an information manual and beautifully presented. And something I've always noticed about our pencils is if it's a good pencil, it smells good. Yeah, that's random, but I say that because good pencils have good wood and the wood is tight enough round the graphite that it holds it. Sometimes with cheaper pencils, what they do is they don't have the wood tight enough against graphite and it's loose in there and it breaks and then you will never get it sharp. It'll just keep on snapping and snapping and snapping. So I invested in these. And this one is 7B. I haven't got these in order right now because I've been using them. My B pencils I do use a lot of. So, let's put that there. Right, so this is a 7B and I'm hoping this will work. So you've got the 7B and the Derwent, the HB. So within my first gentle layer, I'm nearly there. And I find the Faber Castells are a little bit harder than the Derwent's, even in their B range. You see I'm rotating the pencil to keep it nice and sharp. But it's hardly going down. And with these sort of pencils, once you've layered up so far, you start to feel the slipperiness. And that's just the area before it gets shiny. And that's, in a sense, where you want to stop using them. And it's, it's showing you where your layers are, how far you can layer. Right. So I'm going to bring this back up. Yeah, I can I can see a physical difference. So let's see. Come on, camera. There we go. There we go. Right. So Derwent seven B, H B, Faber Castell seven B. You should be able to see that's a much darker, richer, smoother. That's why I like them. So there's three ways of getting. The same technically pencil but it has a difference so you can get the exact same ones in cheaper makes but when you do put in a little bit of money you do get a richer tone so i would say it's worth 
spending a little bit of money here and there but don't go mad there's no point in buying 15 sets of graphite pencils because you're not guaranteed a difference if you get one where it's full of the filler stuff uh, you you've wasted your money basically but I do, I do love these so how I work it is if I'm doing rough sketching really rough sketching out comes a HB if I'm doing detailed work I come out with an automated pencil and depending if I'm doing light or dark work then that depends on the type that I bring out if I get a H or a B or I get the 0.5 or the 0.6 these as well can uh, even though the graphite is all the same size these can have a huge difference as well in the tonal layers that you can get because it's sharper and it's smaller and it breaks so yeah so you can actually get darker lines with these because they're constantly sharp and then of course there's the solid graphite one don't worry I didn't forget it these guys as I say if you drop one and it breaks you get a very very small pencil out of it they the ones that I found uh, the B grades do stay blunt and are really quite crumbly there's like a, a protective coating on this part but this part isn't protected so it does snap and with these you do want to handle them quite lightly because if you get too heavy handed you will snap them especially the B grade ones I found that out as a, going through school literally I went out I spent quite a bit of money on getting these because they look fancy and I thought oh, I'll be the only kid in school with these and I pushed too hard and they snapped so lesson learned and if you're thinking to yourself well I don't colour like this you don't have to colour like this it's however you colour if you colour in small circles just keep on going layers Love thy layers. And you don't have to hold the pencil way back here. You can hold it here. It's just all about controlling the amount of pressure that you're putting onto that paper through the pencil. Now there's something else that you guys might enjoy. Is if you like graphite pencils, there are things called tinted graphites. This is an example this is not a make that I would recommend um, I'm gonna be honest I've not had a good time with Spectrum Noir so this is not a make I would recommend but there are better makes out there in fact I think Derwent do one and they do graphite blocks in colour this is here just for I say so when I mentioned about cheaper pencils sometimes having bad wood I swear somebody's got their mind in the gutter with that one um so this is an example uh, i want to see can i get it can you see there's two colors here so there's a lighter and a darker and you can see the seal really see that difference so this piece is going to raise it up and your pencil sharpener will catch on that in fact there's a there's a nodule here um, so there's a nodule thing just on the end about here so your pencil's going to catch on that and it's going to tear up the wood, split the casing. It's probably why this one's so short. Um, and these are pretty blunt. Oh, it's like a wobbly tooth in there. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Ta -da! So, <laughs> I didn't realise that was going to happen. <laughs> um, yeah. So this type of wood if, isn't any good. If you can see that seam really obviously and you can see chunks and stuff then that's not going to be a good pencil and the wood isn't even tight against the graphite I can pop that quite easily back in there we go. Uh, so another sign that it's not a good pencil that wood should be squishing that graphite nicely but uh, tinted graphite is a thing different makers again uh, I wish I knew where my other set was my better set but these are just demos Tinder graphite shouldn't have too much pigment in it. If it's got too much pigment in it, it'll be soft. And 
if it's really soft there we go if it's too soft you can peel it off with your nail that's another warning sign if it's that soft with pigment in it then yeah it's too soft but the pigmented graphites um, should have a grey hint to them but I mean, these don't have really this is more of a coloured a muted coloured pencil I think even the grey he has grey blue um, yeah see this to me that does not feel like a pencil that that's not graphite that doesn't feel like graphite that's a colour pencil so yeah not not one that I would recommend I use these as a very very quick sketching tin bear with me two seconds I'm going to see if I have got my proper ones like these these babies are actually organised back here so these are the Derwin extra large graphite these cost an absolute bomb I did not exactly enjoy spending the money and I bought them at half price they come in a very very fancy tin pop goes a tin and you get six in here and I think I paid about 30 UK pounds now when I rub my fingers on them I get the tone off so whenever I use these I really have to either have something by my hand where I can quickly wipe my hands off or wrap a bit of tissue around them and that's really what I would expect so when we're talking chunky that's tinted graphite and if it's graphite you can do that you can smudge it these you can't smudge pigment over real graphite so if you really fancy something completely different and you want to use graphites, tinted graphites, get the Derwent ones. But here's the, right, here's their green. So, you can see. And with graphite, you should be able to smudge it. Preferably not with fingers. Come on, I'm going to make fingerprints everywhere. Um, but you can use one of these pencil things. Pencil thing on here. There's not a smudge. Pencil on real graphite. Smudge. Oh, I've even got fingerprints coming up on this one. So that's just some little handy hints, tips, and whatnot. So as I say, if you're going to use a HP pencil. Just hold it light and enjoy it. Don't push hard, that does nothing. Layer it and love it, or love thy layers. If you want to have some colour in your graphite, real McCoy tinted graphite is great, but it will act like graph very loose graphite and you will be able to smudge it and play with it. If you're fencing something completely different, oh, this is charcoal, um, you can buy graphite powders. This is a charcoal powder. Warning, it goes everywhere, and I kid you not. Uh, but you can get graphites in the same format. And that way, if you've got a really, really ba big background, you can pour your graphite powder just a tiny bit on there. Use your blending stamp or a piece of rag. And smudgy, smudgy. Until you've got a lovely matte and then when you've done that you can say take an eraser and remove bits if you're going to go expensive pencils Faber Castell I would recommend good make if you've got a moderate budget they yeah, aren't bad they're not bad but again don't bother pushing hard, just keep it light and keep on layering. And that will help you improve a huge amount on your drawings. It'll also give you a bit of confidence in your layering techniques. You'll find 
that you can add more depth in your shadow. You can even create more movement in the drawing and shape as well. So if ever you see that exercise where they say draw a ball and you have to shade in the, the shadow area and you're doing that and you've only got one pencil, <laughs> you can do it easily. You've just got to keep a light hand and just keep on layering that pencil. So when you see people out and about with 50 million pencils, sometimes you don't need them. Depends on kind of what you're up to. Sometimes you do. But if you've got a friend who only has HB pencils and you think that's silly, don't. Because at the end of the day, one person with a HB pencil can achieve a huge amount of tonal ranges. You can get textures. As I say, all it is about is just layering. And if you really, really, really want a nice smooth blend, just a little weeny weeny bit of smudging. But remember, if you're smudging, you're pushing the graphite into the paper, which can create more shine. And if you do decide to do that and give it a good smudge, you can go back over it and just, again, add another layer. Add some more depth. And remember, shadows have shadows. So, I hope this has given you some food for thought and some ideas about how you can use your pencils. And try different techniques, try different hand holding, try different papers, have a little play with pencils and see what you can create. And until next time, everyone, all the best and happy drawing to you all.